Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars and I thought I would talk to you just a little bit now about the art of utilizing multiple timelines. And this I call multi-timing. I know you've heard talk about multi-diming, especially from Sue Lee, for instance, a PhD, who uh, was the first I heard to talk about that and um, has many free ebooks online. Wonderful stuff, really wonderful stuff. But, but what I'm into is multi-timing. And I thought I'd tell, tell you, for the sake of those of you that are clairaudient, how I've been using this tool for Ascension. Um, as you know, there are, each person in each moment has many timelines to choose from right? And you could think of these timelines as, as a, um, a, a pearl necklace with many different strands, some long, some long, and some short, and some very short, okay? And yet they all connect in the back of the neck with, together in a, in a place that I would call the eternal now, okay? So, so there's many different appearances that timelines have, but, but the thing that they all have in common is the eternal now, right? So, so what do they have that's different? What's the difference between the strands? Well, I would say that the, that the strands that are, that are the long strands in this necklace of, of timelines they have the, the largest pearls on them, the largest uh, discoveries about duality. And the pearls that are this, at the very top, they have the smallest pearls, they, but they have the advantage of getting to the eternal now, that consciousness sooner, okay? So, another way of stating the metaphor of the multi-stranded pearl necklace is to say uh, don't just don't just look at the appearance of things just don't don't just look at the superficial thing the way that things look on the in the front of you you know but behind it all there's that which connects and and unifies everything like the golden clasp on the multi-stranded pearl necklace, there is that, that which is you, which is everything, all times, all dimensions, all the knowledge of the cosmos, in that one place within you. But you have to look deep to find it. You have to look behind everything else. That's where it is. So I'll tell you my own experience, my clairaudient experience lately. I'll be feeling my heart and keeping my heart open. And yet I will hear many uh, very dense um, topics of discussion uh, going on. Got, you know, like lately it's been things like, you know, uh, murder and uh, especially serial killing and... Uh, um, uh, psychic rape and all kinds of things that I consider to be the very, the very large pearls on the necklace of time, the ones that, that integrate the most uh, experience of duality into our soul knowledge. And we've all been through these energies in past incarnations, or, or most of us have. And so what we hear, we, we may be hearing from the point of view of the ascensioneer, right, the person that's the light worker, we might be hearing energies from our own past lifetimes or from other, another way of looking at it is <laughs> from other lifetimes that are happening right now in the eternal now that are like that, that include the experience of very dense energies. Or we might be hearing other folks' experiences of very dense energies. I recall that spiritual counselor Peggy Black, www.peggyblack.com, once mentioned her intuitive feeling 
that much of what we clear here may be other people's energies available to us to transform as light workers. So my stance is when I hear what appears to be other people talking about these topics that were I to follow that timeline would be very worrisome to me. I would be very concerned if I were stepping into the temporal world about the outcome of these things, you know. Is that person going to stop serial killing, for instance, or psychic rape? Is that person going to to allow this world to ascend like that. I would want to step into a position of social justice if I were in the timeline in, in, in terms of cause and effect, okay? But instead, I place my awareness on the clasp at the back of the necklace, on the eternal now, and through that, through that commonality, I open my heart. I keep my heart open, or at the very least, I accept the feeling and the pattern that I experience in my heart, which might be sometimes a fluttering or a palpitating or a flooding with energy or a constriction of energy, whatever it is, it's okay. Because there I am, the glue that holds all these timelines together, I am the clasp, the golden clasp. I am the eternal now. So, so people have asked me, why don't you get upset about all these stories floating past in the newosphere? And my answer is this, they may be true, completely true for the people that I hear talking, but they're not true for me. For me, truth is love and light, you see. So what I do is I, I witness in the eternal now, I sense the pattern of my heart, and I accept these energies so that they may be transformed through the love and light that's incoming from the from the central sun. So one other thing, while you're while you're multi-timing, it's it's important to find yourself in already in a timeline that's the optimal timeline. And so uh, the, the first thing that I do when I start hearing discordant Claire chatter is I get myself out of that timeline and I should have mentioned this I go um, and I've talked about this before but I'll explain it all again uh, that it's very simple you say spirit to team optimize timelines for the all through free will that's the, the activation from the Hathors. The Hathors are very cool. They're all love, love and light. They're, they're beautiful beings of love and light. Fifth dimensional and higher, much higher sometimes. But you know, personally, I prefer those of the fifth dimension. They're, they're just too cool for words. Very cool. And not that I'm against any others. It's just that I really have a wonderful time with the fifth 5D Hathors. And, um, it's been too long, really. It's been a while. And I'm really looking forward to the next time they pay me a visit. So anyway, to get back to the activation of light, it goes, and to explain it just a little bit, you, you say spirit to team. That's your highest self and your soul talking to your celestial attention team, attention team. And then you say optimized timelines that then puts you on the the top rung of the strands of pearls right the shortest the shortest and most optimum timeline or for the current situation it might be another timeline uh, that puts you out of physical danger for instance and emotional turmoil and it takes you out of uh, uh, the mental chaos and all that, you know. So, so you just ask your team, your your celestial ascension team, to find for you the optimum timeline for you to deal with what's going on right now, the clearing that's happening. See, and then you say for the all through free will, and what that means is you're aligning with the the deepest truth of this universe. For the all means that you unite your own, all of your own energies with all of 
the beings and energies everywhere in this universe for the all. It's kind of like the Buddhist saying that says, may all beings be happy, may all beings have enough to eat, and like that, the meta prayer of the Buddhists. Except that it includes all the energies, all beings, all energies, all sorts of energies. Even rocks have a, a, a certain sentience to them, you know. And so the air, the, all of the other dimensions have their own sorts of beings. And this, the all includes all of that, everything. And all your beingness too, of which there is quite a bit. And so then, for through free will means that that everyone's free will must be honored, and that's because this is a free will planet. This is where we place our feet. This is where we take our stand for Earth, for our free will planet, and we honor the. Um, the pre principles on which this earth is, is, is built, is created, right? So in that way, by aligning with the universe and with the principle of earth, uh, earth in this, this solar system, we are making a declaration that, um, that you know about unified field theory? That permeates everything that allows everything to unfold according to the divine will. So, there's that. Um, so, so the, for those of you that are just becoming aware of this and just stepping into the clairaudient astral stories, I would say the important thing to know is that none of this is real. What you hear is not real. What you hear is merely a, a clearing of the noosphere so that it can become more uh, aligned with the energies, uh, the other energies of New Earth. Because see, the incoming light, it can easily transform the physical, the, the physical Earth, and it can, it can transform the astral plane too. But the Newosphere is a specific thing that that is that we humans are very sensitized to because of the type of brain structure that we have. So in a way, it's left to us and our ascension teams to accept and transform the energies of the newosphere, or so I so I feel it. For those of you that that don't like resonate with the notion of timelines, but maybe with the old uh, Hindu uh, mythology. You could consider, uh, from the standpoint of, of the Buddha, the, the island of peace, the play of Leela, consider that, the play of, of illusion in the world, and just know that through your peaceful mind and heart, all this is changing. It's not real. None of this is real. It's just an illusion. So, two tools. Talk to you all later. Take care. Love you lots. <laughs>